Well, ladies and gentlemen, Berta, we're here. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are doing well. Well, right now it is raining outside, so I'm in uh, my daughter's room. So I had to get my lighting right. I'm hoping that it's right and it's not too dark. But nevertheless, my sister, my brother, uh, did you take time out to study? Remember, we must study. We must study the Word. And we know it is late. It is late. We are running out of time on this planet. It's becoming an old garment. And the solution is... Jesus Christ and he state for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but should have everlasting life and that is John 3 16 I'm not sure if my lighting is very dark I had set up earlier this morning but for whatever reason it still seems because I have like two tripod the one that I read that I had to work this it wasn't working right so I decided to get the, the original one that I normally use so so there we are, there we are, I hope that's enough lighting. Okay, so nevertheless, let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you for this beautiful day, Father God. I thank you, Father God. I just thank you, thank you, thank you for the rain that's falling, Father God. We ask you that you will send that rain into our hearts, Father God, to wash us whiter than snow, Father God. Right now, Father God, I also ask you that you will decrease me so that you'll be increased is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, so scripture reading is coming from Genesis 3, verses 3. Genesis 3, verses 3, and it reads, But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his words. So let's go into our topics today. The blindness of the age. The blindness of the age. And the state. Marvelous beyond expression is the blindness of the people of this generation. Thousands reject the word of God as unworthy of belief and with eager confidence receive the deceptions of Satan. Spectics, meaning doubters, and scoffers, meaning people as in contempt, denounce the bigotry of those who contend for the faith of the prophets and apostles, and they divert themselves by holding up to the, to the ridicule, the solemn declaration of the scriptures concerning Christ and the plan of salvation. Satan has long been preparing for his final effort to deceive the world. Let me repeat that. Satan has long been preparing for his final effort to deceive the world. The foundation of this work has laid by the assurance given to Eve in Eden. Ye shall not surely die. In the days ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. This is coming from Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. Little by little, he had prepared the way for the masterpiece of deception in the development of spiritualism. He had not yet reached the full accomplishment of his design, but it will be reached in the last remnant of the time. Said the prophet, I saw three, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. They are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. You can find this in Revelation chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. Except those who are kept by the power of God through faith in his word, the whole world will be swept into the ranks of this delusion. The people are the fast being lured to the final security, to be awakened only by the outpouring of the wrath of God. Mm. Should I repeat that? The people are fast being lured to a final security. No, 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 no. The people of God are fast being lured to a fatal security, to be awakened only by the outpouring of the wrath of God. Said the Lord God, 
judgment also will I lay to the lions, and righteousness to the plummet, meaning purge, and the hail shall swept away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hidden place. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, made meaning made void, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scorch shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. And you can find this in Isaiah chapter 28, verses 17. Okay, Isaiah chapter 28, verses 17 through 18. Okay, so that concludes the blindness of the age. Okay, so on tomorrow, my sister, my brother, we're going to go into a review of the lesson that we have covered, uh, lesson four, uh, Can the Dead Speak to Us? So we're going to go ahead and do a review on that uh, on Thursday, okay? So with that, may I share with you my devotion? May I share with you my devotion? So let me go over here and get that. I need some water. Okay. Let's pray one more time. Father God, I ask you to take, continue to take full control, Father God. Calm my mind, Father God. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay. Christ's legacy of peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And you can find this in John chapter 14, verses 27. And it says, Shortly before his crucifixion, Christ bequeathed to, to his disciples a legacy of peace. This peace is not the peace that comes through conformity with the world. It is an internal rather than an external peace. Without will be wars and fighting through the opposition of void enemies, meaning meaning a, a void of, of the enemies. They say, and the coldness and the superstition let me see where I'm at. I tell the lighting is not that great, but let me go back. Let me go back. It says, without will be wars and fighting, and you know that's going on now, through the opposition of avoid enemies and the coldness and suspicion of those who claim to be friends. The peace of Christ is not to be banished to banish division but it is to remain amid strife and division. Though he bore the title of Prince of Peace, Christ said of himself, Think not that I come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. And you can find this in Matthew chapter 10, uh, verses 34. The Prince of Peace, he was yet the cause of division. Families must be divided in order that all who call upon the name of the Lord may be saved. All who refuse his infinite love will find Christianity a sword, a disturber of their peace. It is impossible for anyone to become a true follower of Jesus Christ without distinguishing himself from the worldly mass of unbelievers. If the world would accept of Jesus, let me repeat that, if the world would accept of Jesus, then they would be no sort of dissension, for all would be disciples of Christ and in fellowship one with another, and their unity will be unbroken. But this is not the case. Here and there are individual members of the family is true to the convic conviction of his conscience and is compelling, compelled to stand alone. Let me repeat that. Here and there, an individual member of a family is true to his convic conviction of his conscience and is compelled to stand alone. 
The line of demarcation, demarcation meaning separation, is made distinct. One stand upon the word of God and the other upon traditions and sayings of men. The peace that Christ gives to his disciples and for which we pray is the peace that is born of truth, a peace that is not to be quenched because of divisions. Without may we war, say so without may be wars and fighting, fighting, jealousy, jealousness. I mean, uh, yeah, jealousy. Let me go back. Let me go back. It says without may be wars and fighting, meaning people are fighting, uh, jealousies, envies, hatred, strife. But the peace of Christ is not that which the world giveth or take it away. Mm. So that concludes my topic, Christ's legacy of peace. So when we talk about peace, uh, it's not the peace, uh, like you state, um, that you're going to have one family that believe on the word of God and standing on the word of God. You have another family member wants to do what they want to do, want to follow the world. So then that's a division, right? There's a division. So he stated that he, he not came to, to bring peace, but to bring a division because each individual will have to make a ch choice, right? Whether you're going to be on God's side or Satan's side. And you know that it's two different worlds. That's two different belief. That's two different, how would you say, requirements. That's two different laws. You have the law of heaven and then you have the law of Satan. Okay. So you know that those two are two different. So you got light and you got darkness. So some people choose to go with the dark side and some people choose to go with the light side. And some people that in the darks on the dark side will decide to give up the dark side and move over to Christ's side. And some people that's on Christ's side right now will decide to go on the dark side. So each individual have to make a decision for themselves. Who, what side, whose side am I going to be on? Am I going to be on the winning team and that's Christ? Or I'm going to be on the losing team, okay? There's only two choices, my sister and my brother. There's nothing, there's no choice that's to say, okay, I'm going to sit on the fence and I'm not going to make a decision. You as a believer, as a Christian, you have to be making a decision, a decision moment by moment because you got things that's coming at you. Uh, you go on social media, there's so many things that's coming at you. You got to decide whether I should look at this or don't look at this. Or what did he say? Or what what did she say? So you've got all these different choices. You're watching the news. A lot of people watch the news. You got to decide. Okay, whatever they say is this true? Whatever they say, you know. So you got to. You always have to be thinking. So we as individuals have to be able to keep our mind, our frontal lobe clear. Okay. How can we do that? We cannot be putting things um, that will destroy our our. How would you say? Uh, destroy or if you say maybe uh, interfere with our thinking process so if I'm drinking or I'm smoking or I'm using marijuana for whatever people say for the pain whatever marijuana my system rather was not was not created for someone to be smoking because you're destroying yourself and then we got an individual that continue to uh, eat them eat uh, flesh food, meaning that meat, beef, chicken, whatever, whatever, even though it's clean. Remember, as wickedness increases in the land, so is disease in the animal kingdom. And if you are eating the animals, that disease, what do you think is going to happen to you after a while? So we as individual, we just got to be very mindful of what we're putting into our body. You know, you need to get the rest too. We need to drink the water. There's a lot of stuff that we need to do exercise as individuals. Remember, God giving us his body and we need to take care of the body. And we will have to give an account for how you have taken care of the things that God has entrusted uh, to you, whether it's financial, whether you're in relationship, God is going to hold you accountable. So we need to be each be thinking, be thinking, have our thinking cap on at all times. So that's why we do not drink, not even one glass of wine, because it, it mess up with your frontal lobe. They allow you not to think and you'll be making, uh, making decisions and going on the wrong side because your mind is... Um, 
it's not thinking clearly. So here is my hymn. I believe I'm doing verses two. Let me look at my notes. I think it's verses two I'm doing here. So I'm going to do one and two. How is that? My faith has found a resting place. My faith has found a resting place, not in a man-made creed. I trust the ever-living one that he for me will plead. I need no other evidence. I need no other plead. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. Enough for me that Jesus save. This ends my fear and doubt. A sinful soul, I come to him. He will not cast me out. I need no other evidence. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. Isn't that beautiful, my sister, my brother? My faith has found a resting place. So let us continue, my sister and brother, to remain faithful until the end. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I just thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for being a mighty God, Father God, that you did not leave me here by myself. Father God, I thank you for my sister, my brother, that stopped by today, Father God. We ask you, Father, to continue to bless each one of us. You know our our shortening that we have, our our unbelief that we have father with god we ask you father god to take our unbelief father and fill us up with the love that we need to study your word to have a closer intimate relationship with thee father god if we have done anything today that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight father god we ask you father god to forgive us and wash us whiter than snow father god and at the end father god we forever give you all the praise the honor and glory because you are worthy to be praised and we thank you in jesus name amen and amen Okay, my sister and brother, guys, thank you guys so much for stopping by. So if this was a blessing to you, can you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the share button, follow me over on YouTube under Burdell Warrior, hit the subscribe button, you can give me a thumbs up there as well. And then what are you doing today? What scripture have you read? Uh, so for me, I am uh, I'm cooking a uh, pot of black beans. I got other stuff that I've already uh, cooked already, but that is one of the things that's still on the stove. And then um, I'm still painting. <laughs> I'm still painting. You know what? It's 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 so, it's amazing as I as I'm painting. Uh, the the painting is easy. Painting is easy. It's very easy. Here's the here's here's the here's the challenge. The challenge is the preparation work that you have to do in order to paint. Because like you have the trim, you know, you might not want like you have like because this is white and up there looks like a baby blue, right? So then you have to do the trim, you know, and you got the blue tape or whatever color tape, and you got to tape all that around and around. So that is what takes take so much time you know so it's not only that you have the challenges in uh and doing the preparation work but then you have to do the work itself by getting the paint on the wall you know getting the paint on the wall but you know what i what i love about the lord is that he is the one when we we he is the one that woos us to come to him you know he's like you know you know uh Burdell, you know what uh, I love you, you know, I died for you, you know, and w when he's wooing you, wooing you, you know, it's not, it's so all we need to do, or all I'm doing is just surrender. It's like, okay, Lord, okay, Lord, take control, take full control. I give you permission to take control. And when I do that, God just take full control. He just comes in and he cleans me up or he cleans you up. And he, you know, he makes us want to study the word. And when we read the Bible, he gives us different, you know, like what, if you read something yesterday, it's a different meaning today. You know, that's how good God is. It's like, he goes in and he's like, he almost is like, it's like a love relationship. You want more and more and more. But then here it is, you're not doing the work. He is the one. So he woos you to him, right? And then once he woos you, then he is the one that carrying you through. So it's not, you know, so it's not like when you're painting. It's like, I mean, that that's the, the, that's the uh, an analogy that I come up with when I'm painting. It's like, God is so good. He makes it so easy for us to make it into his kingdom. All we have to do is surrender. We don't do the work. He is the one. 
even to go get to repentance. He is the one that woo us to repentance, that draw us to him. I tell you, as I continue to, I tell you, this is one of my favorite books. Let me show you. Um, hold on. I was look, look, uh, reading this this morning, uh, Steps to Christ. And if you look at under, there's a title under here. Uh, I think chapter four talks about um, confession. And then uh, chapter three, I think it's repentance. Chapter three is on, on repentance. Repentance. And it's like, it's so deep, my sister and brother. It's an easy reading book, but it, the, the message is so deep. It's so deep. So here is when it says, Christ is ready to set us free from sin. But he does not, but he does not, force the will if we will not accept his grace what more can he do mm. what more so what more can god the father god the son god the holy spirit they will not they are gentlemen they will not force their will on you each individual has to make a decision for themselves whether they're going to be on the god side or satan side each individual my sister my brother has to make that choice. So I hope and pray that you have made your calling and election sure, standing on the winning team, and that is standing on Jesus Christ's side, my sister and brother. So get ready, get ready. Jesus is coming soon. So thank you guys so much. And then, uh, so I already told you what tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to go do a, a review of Can the Dead Speak to Us? We're going to do an overview of that tomorrow. So until then, my sister and brother, thank you guys once again. And then to, until tomorrow, be blessed and take care.